Cording is right up there as one of the annoying side effects after breast cancer surgery. It's really common and can be quite stubborn to treat. I definitely know this as I had cording after my double mastectomy. This is a two-part series on cording. This video covers the ins and outs of cording and then the next video covers the best ways to treat it. Hi, I'm Erica. I'm a breast cancer thriver and a chiropractor. What exactly is cording? If you look this up, the technical term is called auxiliary web syndrome. It can occur after a lumpectomy or a mastectomy. In either case, it's a side effect of lymph nodes being removed from the armpit area, and it can either be through a sentinel node biopsy where just a few are removed, or an auxiliary node dissection where more lymph nodes are removed. A cord develops in the armpit area and can go down the arm and also in the other direction into the chest wall. The first time that you may notice this is when you're doing something that involves raising your arm up. What causes cording? The process of cording is not well understood in the research. The general consensus is that surgery causes trauma to some of the connective tissue in the underarm area as well as the chest. That connective tissue encases a bunch of structures around it things like blood vessels, lymph vessels, and nerves. This trauma leads to inflammation, scarring, and then eventually hardening of the tissues. This hardening can spread down the fibers of the connective tissue and can lead to what we know as cords. How common is cording? It's really common. It can occur in upwards of 85% of women who've had lymph nodes removed with breast cancer surgery. Who's more predisposed to get cording? The research shows that the incidence is higher with a number of factors. Patients who have a lower body mass index, which means thinner, those that are younger, exercise more frequently, those with a greater number of lymph nodes removed, more extensive surgery, or those getting chemo and or radiation. I pretty much checked all those boxes except one. When does cording start? It typically starts about two to eight weeks after breast cancer surgery, but it can also start many weeks or months later. I noticed mine a couple of weeks after my double mastectomy, but I've had patients where it does show up much earlier. What does cording look like? Cording can present as a single cord or thin multiple cords, usually in the armpit area. The cords can extend variable distances down the arm. So most women will have it at least going down the upper arm. And then it's also quite common for the cords to go down into the forearm area. The cords can extend in the other direction too from that armpit area into the chest wall. The cords become more visible when the arm is generally straight and out to the side as this tensions the cords more. Anytime I'm checking my progress with cording, I typically hang from a bar or I'll hold the top of a door and then just lean my body weight down. I had cording that started in the armpit area and was most visible in the upper arm area, although it did go down into my forearm. And then it extended from that armpit area into the outer chest area. And then I had tissue expanders put in during my mastectomy surgery and the port of the expander was right underneath my mastectomy scar. And there was so much tension with that. And so the cording almost tied in with the scar tissue in that central breast area. And then from there, it continued cording down my abdomen to just above my waist. It was so weird. It was almost like I had two guitar strings that went down my abdomen. What does cording feel like? The cords tend to be tight and painful. They often limit your shoulder motion. This is usually up to the front or out to the side or a combination of both. The pain and the tension that you'll feel is usually at the end ranges of these movements, not usually in those lower ranges. For me, the sensation of tension has always been so much more than the actual pain. But when I'm stretching, this tight or tension feeling is nothing like I've experienced with other injuries. Very different than if you were just stretching a tight muscle. With a tight muscle, you tend to feel it really sort of open up and settle as you continue the stretch. And I found with cording that there's just so much more resistance to those tissues letting go. If the cording extends into the forearm area, it can make it challenging to straighten your elbow or wrist all the way. 
just like any other injury that you have in the body, cording isn't something that happens in isolation. So when there's tension with the cords, there's going to be some compensatory tension in all the surrounding areas of those cords. When I did a rotation type of stretch, I had no issues rotating on the unaffected side. But on the cording side, my muscles and fascia just felt so tight in my whole trunk area. So the front, the side, and the back. So that movement felt very restricted in general. If this video has been helpful to you, a subscribe would mean a lot to me. It gives me an indication that I'm putting out helpful information for those going through breast cancer treatment. How long does cording last? I asked this question to every practitioner that I saw. There's quite big discrepancies with what you'll hear people say, what you'll read in books, and then what I would also read in research articles. Some say it resolves as quickly as 12 weeks, but I really don't think that's the norm. More recent research has found that cording does not resolve in all patients and can persist for years down the road and can also come back after resolution. That all sounds pretty negative, but keep in mind, there's a lot of things that you can do to address cording and having persistent long-term cording doesn't necessarily mean it's limiting you. I'm two years out from my double mastectomy and I still have visible cording. Do I still have the same pain and tightness that I originally had with cording? No. Is my shoulder range of motion as reduced as it was at the beginning? No. I have near full range of motion with my shoulder and I have much less tension than I originally had. The cording is still quite visible, but my actual function is quite good. It's more the sensation of tension and pull that I find is the most challenging part of this. I'm used to my body moving in a certain way and when something's different, I'm really body aware and I just notice it. How does reconstruction surgery affect cording? Everyone's experience is different, but this was mine. A few days after reconstruction, I noticed a significant improvement in the cording that went from the armpit area into the side of the chest. So an indirect bonus of that second surgery was some of that scar tissue in the surrounding area was released and this helped to reduce the sort of pull on the cord in that area. I did a ton of rehab after my double mastectomy, but what I found is when my arm was all the way up overhead, there was just more tension on that cancer side just to hold that position. When I would do an overhead squat with a dumbbell on the unaffected side, I could easily keep my arm up by my ear, which is where it should be. But on the cording side, I would compensate so much to try to have my arm overhead because of all that extra tension and try to just maintain that position. I didn't actually do much of these as an exercise because I was compensating so much, but I was just testing out the imbalances side to side. After surgery, like I said, there was a bit more of an ease to have my shoulder in that overhead position and it made this overhead squat position much easier. I did find that there was sort of a tightening up in that whole area about four to six weeks after that exchange surgery. That new normal of tension, which was less than it was before, stayed relatively constant and never went back to what it was pre-surgery. How does radiation affect cording? Some women, including myself, can experience side effects from radiation where there's a tightening and hardening of the tissues in the radiated field. So in through the chest area, underarm area, and this can indirectly affect the function of the shoulder. So these symptoms of shoulder tension can really play into each other. And it can be challenging to separate the causes as there's often overlap in symptoms. What degree of tension in this area is from cording and what's due to radiation fibrosis? No one will be able to say that, but at least if you address both, then you'll be on the right path. Some injuries are a work in progress, and this has definitely been the case for me with cording and for many other women. So what can you do about cording? Cording can be stubborn to treat, but there are so many things you can do to address this side effect, and I tried them all. This next video covers the things that helped me the most to address cording. See you there.